Ready? Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and open the the box the way you normally would with any box knife. Slide the plate out. And the most important part is getting the shade out of this packaging. Always use your knife with it down as far as you can get it and cut away from everything. Hold it underneath and cut it. Get the shade out. Okay, and then when you're opening this package, you just don't, don't even use your knife, just open the plastic. And it's sometimes a pain to get them out of here. your brackets, your remote, your screws, your plug, on the brackets themselves will come with your screws, your retainer ring is on, and your cotter pin will be in with the bracket. Retainer ring. Okay. Okay, so this one is set up for a right motor. Take the motor bracket. Okay, basically this is a fascia mount, the right hand motor, so we're gonna come in here. We're going to come about an eighth inch behind the space right there. Now I'm going to shoot up on this one. Okay. Motor bracket secure. Okay. Leave about an eighth inch space that way your, your fascia will snap in flush. Okay. And then the hardware bracket goes basically the same way. Two screws in it. Cradle. And then I'm going to take 
cotter pin. That's a basic cotter pin. Never bend it. Basically, you're going to take a screwdriver from behind and push it up to where that it's just spread like that, where that it can't come back out. Because if you have to take it back out, then you can get back in there with your screwdriver, push it back together, and it pulls right out. If you bend it too much, it's really hard to get these out if you need to take the shade down. So this just is for uninstallation. Yeah, just don't bend this. When you put this cotter pin in, don't bend it more than just spread. So he's just doing, he's spreading very, very a very small amount there. Correct. That and way, the, if you get a hold of it, it'll still close back up to pull back out. Right. But we do not want it to be bent in yeah. any spot. Don't take that cotter pin and bend it around like that. Do not. This is what we do not want to do. Because then you can't hardly get it out. You're going to have a big problem uninstalling the CD. Yes. Okay. depending on where you're going to take it, if you're using a Wago or if you're plugging into a, a plug somewhere up in the attic or whatever, at that point you're going to cut the cord however long you want it, which can be cut with anything. This is a pair, this is a stripper that I have that not everybody has. You don't have to have this one. You can do it with a regular pair of strippers like these. You're just going to cut it here. Just be careful when you're cutting it. And then you're going to cut some strings off. Okay, and then we're going to strip back about a quarter of an inch on each lead. We've got a black, a green, and a white. Black is your line voltage. White is your common. Green's your ground. I'm going to take our plug and the Phillips screwdriver. Do it. I'm going to feed it into here. Okay, on the black wire, we're going to put it on the brass side. There's a brass and a nickel side. And your green for your ground. We're gonna put the black on the brass side. Black on the brass side, okay. Mm -hmm. And you strip that black cord quarter and the inch down from the lead, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna put the white one on the silver lead. White on silver lead. And then of course the ground and the ground. So the green, the green wire goes in the in the green. Into the ground. And make sure you have them tight. Okay. Slide your shield up. What is that you're doing? Sliding the shield back up over for the plug. Okay. This little notch right here goes right in that notch right there. It lines up 
pretty well there. Pretty easy there. Just put the screws back in. Okay, I'm just closing this the plug back up. Okay, at this point, I'm going to use zip ties to put on the cord. So I go around this cord right here. I'm going to zip it in and then from, from behind I'm going to shoot a screw to hold this cord up where that it can't get in contact with the shade itself going to wherever this cord needs to go. Whether it's going down to a plug, it's going up to a plug, into a Wago plug or, or whatever. So you're basically just saying that I'm you, just, to I'm get just you... using these anywhere that I need to keep this, shit, this cord up out of the way. Right, because we don't want the cord to interfere with the operation of the shade. shade. Because if you run it across here like that and it gets into the shade, the shade walks a little bit, well it's going to start fraying the shade, it'll make the shade walk twice as bad as what it, it would without it. Okay, so we want to we want to keep, secure that cord Correct. up, and, up ab and above. And above the motor, like that right and there. Up and above the motor, okay. Okay, so that's the what zip the zip ties are for. Are for. Then you're just okay. going to use your, your nippers to nip those off wherever you need to. Right, and that's all but, user but preference. How many of these you need just to get to wherever the plug is. Right. Okay, now I need to plug in. So the shade is installed at this point. Shade is installed. Okay, and at this point, like I said, I would put a zip tie. Even if I was going to just come straight down, I'd have a zip tie right there to keep this cord from getting into the right. shade ever again. So even if you, my cord was going to go right down, straight down to where the plug is in my house, I would still want to zip tie this to secure it away from the shade so that it will not interfere at all. Correct. Or use some type of wire molding. Something to keep it secure. Something to keep it secure. Yep. Away from the shade. Okay. It goes. Oh, this, you got these grooves right here. That's just going to fit over the top. And then there's little tabs on the bottom of the brackets. A little tab right there. That's what the fascia hooks on to. Right there. Got one on each bracket. All right. And the fascia just after that comes down.